guys so voice over in is back and i want to show you some ideas for the products i want to make for this spring shop update like clay pins and also stitch markers and if you have no idea what the stitch marker is let me show you basically when you're knitting or doing crochet you can use these markers to count and keep track of stitches you can slip them in the needle like this I don't know if you can see, but I have a tiny ring here to mark the first three stitches in this project. I also want to make new Mimo pads and I want to make a ring holder that's basically a wizard frog when you can put your rings on his hat. I'm also planning some cottagecore light academia bookmarks which I still need to make illustrations for and I have some magnet sheets leftovers lying around so I want to make some fridge magnets as well I did a couple of sketches but I don't have enough magnets for all the designs so I'll probably just go with a pigeon for now and finally a very rough doodle just to remind that I also want to make notebooks it's going to be a lot of work, so let's jump right into it! Oh damn, I forgot to show you the sketches for the pigeon yarn holders I also want to make. I'll be painting them with this black acrylic gouache by Liquitex and I'm using a super thick watercolor paper that I had since my days in college. I can't really tell you the brand because they sold single A2 or A1 sheets in the shop and I already lost the label with the name but I can tell you it's way thicker than those 300 grams watercolor paper and while I'm painting these babies let me tell you what's a yarn holder these are basically great to wrap portions of yarn when you're doing color work in knitting or crochet and there's a knitting technique that I really want to learn it's called intarsia but I still need some yarn holders for the blocks of color and I thought why not make some pretty wizard pigeons so yeah here we are now selling these in sets of two yarn holders so they'll come with two different pigeons one with a witch hat and the other with a hat with the little stars I'm making two holes to hold the strands of yarn super cute and someone on tumblr pointed out to me that when you wrap the yarn around it looks like a little scarf so it's even cuter making things with clay so much. I'm working on the pins and I also managed to make the wizard froggy. 
I think it turned out great and will look super cute once it's painted. You see this mess guys? Please make sure you use a mask when you're sending stuff, you don't want all of this to get in your lungs. I've washed them off to remove the dust, so they need to dry now. For painting, I'm also using the acrylic gouache by Liquitex. These are quite nice, but unfortunately they're not very opaque, so I need to add lots of layers to get a good coverage. And I'm testing a new matte acrylic paint that's more opaque and also cheaper, so I'll let you know once I've reached the conclusion. For sealing, I'm using this semi-gloss varnish by Fimo. I've got it on sale on my local shop and I'm really liking it so far. It's really thin, so it doesn't leave a lot of brush strokes, dries quite fast and most importantly doesn't feel tacky at all. And you also only need a little bit to seal an entire pin. And as an engineer, I also came up with a setup that allows me to seal both sides of the stitch markers at the same time. Basically, I hang them on this stuff that people use for socks, and I can apply the varnish on both sides at once. Finally, I'm reusing an old necklace chain for the stitch markers. part for the pins is to glue the butterfly clasps on the back and I've used this Aralvite Aral glue since it's the strongest I know and is a bit safer than super glue. For the memo pads, I start by painting the illustrations on paint tool side and then add the textures with Photoshop brushes. And I like to use these two tools because paint tool side gives me more control over the lines, but Photoshop is better for texture than messier brushes. <laughs>
forgot to record the part where I add these textures to the strawberries, but I did them with my favorite brush set in Photoshop by Christine Garner. And you can get this set on Christine's Gumroad, and it comes with a lot of traditional looking brushes like oils, markers, and gouache. And I really like it. And I'll leave Christine's Gumroad uh, in the video description in case you want a brush set. for the frame is the most difficult part so I just start by painting with a random color and then play with the adjustment settings this in a previous video but I always do small color tests before printing the final products this is because every time you use a new paper or change your settings your colors will look different and these tests take a while but are worth it since you'll not be wasting lots of prints afterwards and yes I cut all of these babies by hand and it's not really that bad as you might think of course I can make like hundreds of memo pads at once and I'd like to get a guillotine but I would also like to get a new tripod, a silhouette cutting machine, a sewing machine, an iPad, a new microphone and am I forgetting something? Well you get the idea. Uh, I'd love to invest in so many things but I also like not to go bankrupt and have all these things piling up in the apartment so I'm still thinking about priorities for now. The backing of my memo pads usually changes depending on what I've bought for them. Sometimes they'll come with a colored cardstock, but this time I had these cardboards from drawing pads, which I think look super cute. And I decided to use them instead and this way I can also give them a new life. For gluing the pages, I'm using this vinyl glue, but I believe any glue that's thick will work as well. So I bought a few magnet sheets last year's Christmas because I wanted to make a bunch of magnets with pigeons and fat words for my boyfriend to use on his whiteboard uh, because he also loves birds and I've had these leftovers hanging around so I've used my baker pigeon design to make fridge magnets 
and these are printed on sticker paper and I also stick them to another sticker sheet to make them more opaque so you can't really see the black from the magnet does that make any sense? I hope it does and they're also laminated so they'll last longer and look prettier to make a pattern full of moths so I spent about one week painting nine different moth species and as usual I painted them with gouache and used colored pencils for details and textures and come with three moths with name of each species. Jumping around because I was so happy with how they look. 
The notebooks have this moth pattern printed on a thick A4 textured paper, which looks a lot like watercolor paper. I've also bought this A2 sketch pad by Fabriano. These are a bit expensive, but the paper is of really nice quality and is great for pencils, pens, markers and even for watercolors. With watercolors it gets a bit wrinkled, but I personally like that effect since it makes notebook look kind of vintage. And I also prefer when the pages are plain instead of ruled. a decent hole puncher but it didn't arrive on time and I wanted to make notebooks so I've tried with a regular needle but it's too difficult to make holes so I discovered it's quite easy to punch with a pen like so you use to stick papers to cork boards a piece of foam underneath the notebook to make it easier to punch the holes. this wooden knife to fold the notebook, but you can use anything that isn't sharp. I also trim the pages afterwards.
customers since they don't get damaged as easily. and magnets but hopefully I'll make a lot more in the future. And our yarn holders which come in a set of two magical pigeons. The wizard frog ring holder turned out super cute as well and I did my best not to snatch it for myself but I promise to make more froggies and other animals for future shop updates. personal favorites are the moths, the wizard pigeon and frogs and they're all different so you'll get a really unique bit. One or two of these were already from a previous shop update and they're still looking for a new home so I'll list them as well. And this is my own personal preference but I really like how they're not super glossy so they look really nice on clothes. and the back includes a pattern of the corresponding knots. Here's a closer look at the notebooks. They have 60 pages and I think they look so pretty that I've already snatched one for myself and I'm using it as a sketchbook. And I also made mini prints with all the modes I painted. They also include the species name and you can get a single print or the whole set.